Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitali. On this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I want to share with you my recipe for what I call my vegetarian cacciatore. Now, if you're familiar with a traditional cacciatore, you know it's made with you know chicken or in some cases even rabbit, and it's been just it cooks slowly for a while. It's delicious, and I do have a recipe on chicken cacciatore or cacciatore online at kitchen.com. So if you want to check out the original, more traditional one, please go ahead. But I figured I would make a real nice healthy vegetarian version for all you veggie lovers out there. So let's go over the ingredients to get started. You're going to need some mushrooms and I'm using little portobello mushrooms. You're going to need some onions, red bell pepper, eggplant, some chopped Italian tomatoes. You're going to need some red wine, garlic, pinch of hot pepper flakes, salt, pepper, olive oil, and you're also going to need your choice of starch to put this on top of. I'm using some beautiful whole wheat thick like pappardelle, which is like a thick noodle. Um, you can do this over regular pasta, over rice, over polenta, over any kind of starch that you like. So, let's get straight into it. What I've got here is a really large skillet with high sides with about three tablespoons of olive oil. And as you'll notice, this is a bigger one than the one I normally would use. And that's because I want a lot of surface to get lots of color on these veggies very important. So also, since we have a ton of veggies to brown up, I'm going to do it in batches. So the first one I'm going to put in is going to be the eggplant. And I'm doing that because eggplant is very spongy, okay? So if I were to put all these veggies together, we would get no color and they would steam because there's just not enough surface for them to brown. So by doing the eggplant first, since it's a spongy kind of, um, it's got a spongy texture, it's going to brown and it's going to have no other liquid from any other veggies. So that's why I'm doing it. I have this over medium high heat. I'm going to add in my eggplant to my olive oil. I'm going to salt the eggplant just to kind of help the moisture come out and help it brown. And then just, and you'll see that the olive oil disappears and that's because the eggplant is like a sponge. It soaks it all in, but that's fine. You're going to cook this over medium high heat for about five minutes or so or until the eggplant starts to become nice golden brown around the edges and starts to cook down. My eggplant is looking perfect. It's just how I want it. So now I'm just going to remove it onto a plate. Now back to the same skillet, I added another tablespoon of olive oil and to that I'm going to add in my mushrooms. And again, I'm not going to put all these veggies in there together because they would, there's just not enough room for them to color. They'll just steam. So doing it in batches gives you just a nice amount of color, which I just love when you make dishes like this for each vegetable to just get nice caramelized. It adds to the flavor of it. It's just delicious. So now, just like with the eggplant, just cook the mushrooms for about three to four minutes or then until they're brown and they start to cook down. It looks great. So now I'm just going to put these on the same plate as the eggplant just to kind of keep them aside so that we can saute our last batch of veggies. And I'm going to need just a tiny little bit more drizzle of olive oil, but don't be afraid of that because you need the olive oil to help the veggies brown. So just put the peppers and onions right in. Oh yeah. And then just like we did with the with the mushrooms and the eggplant, I'm going to just salt these. I'm not putting any pepper in yet because I'm going to put the pepper in when I put in the chopped tomato. So it's going to come in just a little bit. And now I'm just going to cook these for the exact same amount of time as I cooked the other two for about five minutes or until, again, they got a nice amount of color and they've started to cook down. They okay, look great. So now to this, I'm going to add back in the veggies that we browned off in batches. Mm, I'm also going to put in my fresh garlic and I'm putting it in now instead of, you know, with all the rest, of, the rest of the veggies because I want the garlic to cook for like a minute and no longer because I don't want it to burn, otherwise it becomes bitter. So now this is just going to cook for about a minute or until that raw garlic scent has gone away. Now time to add in a pinch of hot pepper flakes or as much or as little as you want. And now, hot pepper flakes, the peppers, the onions, the mushrooms, they're your usual suspects in a cacciatore. We are just adding in the eggplant and we're really bulking up those veggies because it'll be filling, it'll be full, it'll be delicious and you won't miss the meat at all. Now to this, I'm going to add in some red wine because it's definitely very traditional. It adds great flavor. If you don't want to use red wine, you can either completely 
you know, skip this step and just go on to your tomatoes or you can put in a little bit of vegetable stock. It still adds a great amount of flavor. It's not going to be deep flavor like the red wine, but it's just going to be just as delicious. So this is going to cook for a minute or until the alcohol evaporates. Adding in my tomatoes. Look how beautiful this looks. Just love how it's full of veggies. Give this a big stir, mix everything together. And I'm cooking this over medium heat, no lid. And since you don't have any meat that has to cook for a long time in order for it to get tender, this only needs about 20 minutes and you have dinner. It's delicious. So after this has been cooking for about 10 minutes, I'm going to put in my pasta and cook it for another 10 minutes and then we'll kind of finish the whole thing off together. My sauce here is looking perfect. As you can see, it's really, really nice and thick. I've also cooked off my pasta, drained it, and I put it back into the same pot because I just needed a pot that was a little bit bigger in order for me to toss everything in. Now I'm just seasoning it a bit more of salt and the black pepper. And I'm going to put in some fresh chopped basil and even a little bit of parsley because I love parsley with mushrooms, one of my favorite herbs. So that's looking perfect. It's really nice and thick, which like I said, it's exactly what I want because it's going to stick to that pasta super well. Now I'm only going to use half of this because I'm only making enough here for two people, generously, of course. And this can go into the fridge for us to use tomorrow night for dinner. Unless I feel like using the whole sauce because it's just very delicious. And if you want to put some cheese in here at this point, some fresh parmigiano, be my guest. I usually don't. Um, yeah, it just kind of reminds me of cacciatore. Cacciatore doesn't have any cheese in it, so I'm just going to put this right into this big plate now. Look at that. It's not like watery and runny. It's super, super thick. Love that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, that looks perfect. Now, of course, you top a little bit more sauce on top, but I want to just try some because I'm quite hungry, actually. Uh, like I always am. <laughs> okay, let's see how I can do this without burning myself. This is like becoming tricky. Come on. But we'll take a second here. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. Some veggies. Mmm. That is delicious. Mmm. Tastes just like a cacciatore does, but without chicken. It's still filling, it's still thick, it's still really deep in flavor, and it couldn't be easier to do. I hope you enjoy spending time with me. Get in your kitchen and make this dish, because I guarantee if you're a meat lover, I mean, I'm a meat lover, as we all know, I like my steak, I like my chicken, but this is absolutely delicious, and you're going to love it. I'll see you next time. Get this recipe and others at www.laurainthekitchen.com. Bye.